Sprite All Metal Director and Extruder, PEI Magnetic Sheet, Dual Z Axis, Even Handle and Light. Ender 3 S1 Pro has 22 by 22 print area and a print height of up to 27 cm in the Z axis. The printing volume is not too big but also not too small, we can say standard sizes like most 3D printers. The aluminum heated bed can go up to 110 degrees and as you can see, we have a PEI sheet as the printing surface which is nice. You know they are great at sticking, even the most complicated prints stick easily. For example, this is a very difficult first layer and as you can see, it's fantastic. And to remove the print, just bend it slightly, it pops off easily. Even the smallest parts adhere perfectly and I can easily remove it from the surface. That's great. There's also another nice detail on the printing bed that is this handle. I haven't used this kind of handle so far but this works very well, really useful. Now let's move on to the real upgrades, the extruder. First of all as you can see the printer has a direct drive extruder. This is Sprite all metal dual gear direct drive extruder. We can say that this extruder is one of the highlights of the printer. Because this is an all metal extruder, so unlike other PTFE line extruders, this one has no PTFE tube in the heat break and so the hot end can go up to 300 degrees, which is great because this way, besides PLA, AVS, TPU or PETG, we can also print with nylon filament. So in my opinion, this all metal extruder has definitely moved the printer one step further because it allows the use of a different material. By the way, the extruder is dual geared like this, it doesn't have this kind of idler pulley inside, instead there are two metal gears, which will obviously provide a stronger grip. On the front of the print head, we see CR touch, which does automatic leveling. I have used this probe in other printers before, it works very well, and I'm quite happy with that. There are both manual and automatic leveling options on the interface. First I do manual leveling from the corners followed by automatic leveling. And finally after setting the Z offset, everything is ok. By the way the standard Ender 3 S1 did not have a touch screen, it was buttoned but as you can see in the S1 Pro, it's upgraded to touch screen and the touch feeling is not bad, nice. The interface is quite simple and easy to use for me. It's something that can be changed with updates though. It's also nice to see PID settings on the interface. Ender 3 S1 Pro uses a Creality branded 24V power supply and a 32-bit motherboard with silent driver of its brand as well. So there's not much stable motor sound when I'm working, there are just fan sounds and the sound of the printer is normal, no different from the other printers. Even though the printer is a direct drive, the print head isn't too big but it is still very difficult to see the nozzle during the printing because of this fan duct here. I can't say anything about this fan duct's performance right now, we'll see when the printing is finished. Long story short, it is still a nice minimized design looks pretty good quality. Also it is fixed to a metal bracket from the right side of it. This way we can call it a 3D printing module. Because just like this, there's also a laser module compatible with the printer that can be attached here. The print head weighs 334 grams and the S1 Pro uses dual Z motors on the vertical axis for all this, which is nice. This also means extra cost though. Movement in the Z axis is provided by brass nuts and lead screws and on the top side of these nuts I think there are some kind of soft parts that reduce the backlash of the lead screw and nut. Also these two lead screws are connected to each other with a belt at the ends. So they are also mechanically synchronized. To be honest I don't think it's a big plus that they are connected with belt. I have used printers that are not connected like this and I haven't had any problems so far but of course it's nice to see that they are connected by a belt. Well let's jump to the prints. After the installation I first printed this calibration cube. This is genuinely a good print. 
the layers look good, and the dimensions are pretty accurate, but it still needs some tuning. The next point is this 3D Banshee. I should really like retraction tuning, the layers look pretty good, and by the way the cooling seems to be enough. The first layer and letters are also looking good, very clear and easy to read. This is sinking or melting 3D Banshee, this is a little complicated print than 3D Banshee and normally it's really difficult to stick to the surface, but it is completely adhered and there is no warping or something. I printed this using the waste mode in Cura. As you can see it only has one wall, there are blobs in some places, this is probably due to the filament, it was an old filament, or it could also be due to the waste mode in Cura. Other than that, looks nice. So the Ender 3 S1 Pro is a nice and definitely high quality 3D printer. Yes, the print area is not very big, standard size, but in my opinion, it's enough for most prints. Full Metal Direct Drive Extruder will make TPU printing quite easy, it will also allow using of nylon filament, and it will definitely last longer. The vertical axis has belt connected 2Z motors, nice to see that. I don't think there will be any problems with sticking on the bed, because we have a PEI sheet and CR touch, plus there are also bed springs, this way we can get a perfect first layer easily. Besides that, we have a deep drawer. a nice LED light on top, and a filament sensor. Earlier in the video I mentioned that this print head is a module, and now I'm gonna remove it and put the laser module in. Need to update the software for the laser. I'll first update the screen followed by the motherboard. This is Creality's slicing software. In general, I will not change anything. Let's create a G code in default settings. We lower the laser module down until the black part next to it touches the base. It is like adjusting the Z offset. Alright, we have done the first engraving, it looks pretty good. I have this kind of filament, but as you can see it doesn't say PLA or ABS, so... It only took 2 minutes and it's pretty good. This is nice, but I think the lines are a bit thin, it's not very visible from a distance, so I'm gonna go over it one more time. This time it looks better, and the lines are more visible. Yeah, definitely it's better now. That was the Ender 3 S1 Pro. By the way, I have been using Ender 3 V2 for years, and it still works nicely. And this one is a much more upgraded version of it, so I think this printer will be way better. If you like Creality's printers, 
I'm sure you will love this S1 Pro. High quality, solid, and almost complete. All features available. You'll probably see this printer quite often in my next projects such as magnetic gearbox. So I hope this video useful to give you an idea. Please consider subscribing. See you next time.